I want to ask you some compositional questions. I want to try to understand some of this dissonance that's happening and how you guys build this architecture. How did you ever come up with, let's say, for example, the melody on Travolta, the mm -hmm. vocal melody? Yeah, yeah. The guitars and keyboards are sort of doing this augmented chord, I think. It's like a D minor major seventh for the most part. But I mean, uh, on the upbeats, you've got the... Yeah. Beep, beep, which yeah, yeah. is like it sounds like they're augmented chords on the top yeah i, I guess that, that's the um that are a half step away from each other right like that that's if you take the third the fifth and the seventh of the of the d minor major seven yeah i mean it's kind of like an augmented chord yeah when i started getting into that stuff and trying to place okay here's the vocal melody and i would often not be able to re relate the vocal melody to what was going on underneath it at all it was almost like it was floating in the middle of nowhere yeah not related and i'm <laughs> like how what was the process of <laughs> determining those notes and then getting a singer to hit those notes over these strange chords beneath it depends on that specific case actually it's great that you're being specific because i can i can tell you case by case most or a lot of that song was written as a like a big band jazz tune i had scored for college called a walk through necropolis I didn't write that melody as part of that thing. When, when we were putting it together as a Mr. Bungle song, mm -hmm. like Patton wrote sort of the penultimate riff where it slows down and goes, dun, 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 dun. That thing okay. made, made the tune into a Mr. Bungle song because before that it was like, you know, just my kind of uh, attempt at a big band tune, but I never had a compelling bridge section. He wrote that part of it and it was like, that works, you know, we'll make a song out of it. So then we had to have the lyrics and the melody over top of it. And out of nowhere, he just came up with that melody over top of that chord clustery stuff. Yeah. So this was like completely his native. That's what he heard. And he did it consistently. He never changed yeah. the notes. This is just how he heard it, which was, yeah, it's authentically bitonal, I suppose. But that's because he's hearing, hearing it in his own way. And then from there, we added a couple of other things to support his melody just a couple of, of other weird notes in those clusters mm -hmm. like when it you know when it changes he does it twice and then the melody changes a little bit there are a few little subtly embedded other notes that come in on those yeah and also singing harmonies to it it just does not compute as mm -hmm. far as so i'm really curious on i think it's the, ever... the, that's the strength of just some melodic it, do, you know you know stump for example that band stump from no oh you don't know that band no I'll just bring that up as an example. You can check them out at some point. They're from like late 80s and early 90s. I guess it was mostly the 80s. But no, they're like a really crazy, progressive, strange fucking band. Amazing bass player, totally out. Over all of this cacophony, you would have these really consonant song, like sing-songy type of things mm -hmm. that the, the vocalist would somehow manage to do over top of this total chaos, way more chaotic than, mm -hmm. than what we did. And I won't say that that, like, you know, is what we were thinking, but when it was happening, I totally accepted it as, yeah, this is, you can make really compelling music where there are two different simultaneous worlds that are barely related to each other as long as the, the melodic thing, let's say the melodic person is strong enough to just yeah. kind of barrel through it all. Yeah, yeah. and that, that's what's so hard is if you try to go up and do karaoke to that, you have to really put the note there yeah. as a vocalist. Absolutely. Yeah, there's no question. <laughs> no question about <laughs> it. Yeah. But I did find some of that uh, in Angel Dust, where I was like, holy shit, this guy is actually hitting notes that are not there before. Yeah. And forcing them out. And like, they're tense fucking notes that don't belong, you know? For but sure. But they do, I mean, they work. They work. They're, they're doing their thing. But who would think to ever sing the wrong note over this thing in my, such a strong my way? My theory about that, like, you know, because I've known Mike a long time, and I know that um, Trevor, Mike, and I would spend a lot of time in Trevor's bedroom just kind of hashing over stuff in their early days. And, mm -hmm. you know, Trevor and I were very much music nerding out. So we were exper experimenting with all kinds of chord extensions and you yeah. know, learning jazz and doing all this stuff. And we would show that stuff to mike you know like mm -hmm. he he's really comfortable singing um even back then he was like singing elton john kind of types of melodies mm. and i think over time he just sort of developed a thing of you know hitting the some of those you know 
<laughs> natural sevens over when there should be a dominant seven. Yeah. He just developed an ear for that kind of yeah. stuff from, you know, from a lot of the stuff that we were all doing together. And then that applies. I mean, he has a strength of melodic contour he can do as a vocalist. And then mm -hmm. he, he, believe me, he knows where, where the notes are when he's doing them. It's not, mm. it's all very natural to him. I hear a bit of a similar thing happening in some of Trevor's stuff. What was that pop record he put out? Oh, Mad Love. Mad Love. Yeah. I heard that and immediately like, there's the thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, Trevor's... It's, it's yeah. like, I actually figured out that the first, what is it, Rats with Wings? There's this song where if you completely get rid of the rest of the instruments, it's basically Earth Angel, you know? Like, <laughs> like totally one... Six four five mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would go over that melody, but then he puts these completely clashing chords underneath it. Yeah, reharmonizing. Yeah, absolutely. I just find that stuff really interesting, and I, I can you know, I heard that in the Mr. Bungle stuff. I hear you know, so for I'm kind sure of following that, and I'm like, how do I? I think Trevor's maybe closer to what you're like. My my wielding of like polytonality is more you know, it, it comes from a, a slightly different place. Trevor's really good with teasing you into thinking you're hearing one thing and then but you're you're hearing this one x factor thing mm -hmm. he, he always does that he's very consistent with that and he's really good at it my stuff i try to you know i'm more of a consonant consonants versus dissonance i don't really do the uh the idiomatic thing as well as he does you know he's really good with, with what do you mean by idiomatic when you say that re regarding this well to me like when i hear like trevor the way he constructs like say dominant seven related chord and then the other note, like the X factor note that he throws into that, I have the same reaction to you, like as you as you have, is like mm -hmm. I can't I can't put that anywhere. Like what the <laughs> fuck is that? You know? Like I would have never done that. Yeah. I have that same reaction. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting what he does. Hello, this is Carl King. If you liked this clip, you can hear the full-length interview with Trey on the Carl King Podcast, Episode 14. Find out more at carlkingdom.com slash podcast.